This little French fry is named Turbo. He was born without any front legs. And he was being picked on by his brothers and sisters. It wasn't very nice. He needed a new place to live, with a family who moved more at his speed. So a kind lady at the vet clinic decided to take Turbo home. Even though Turbo didn't have any front legs, he was just like any other puppy. He wanted to play and go outside, but it wasn't easy, not even a little. But did that stop Turbo? Nope. His mom would hold out a little treat and Turbo would use all his strength to get to it. It helped his back legs get stronger. But it wasn't enough. Turbo needed something more. He needed wheels. Problem was, Turbo was tiny. Even the smallest dog carts were too big for him. So his mom tried making her own carts. She made the first one out of a helicopter toy, but it didn't quite work. So she tried a few more. Turbo was losing hope. He was trying so hard, but it still wasn't working. Then something amazing happened. A guy who makes parts for airplanes heard about Turbo's story online, and he designed a cart just for him. It was orange and had lime green rollerblade wheels. Looking good, Turbo. But would it work? At first, Turbo didn't know what to do. He would walk a little, but he was still discouraged. Then his mom had an idea. Maybe Turbo just needed someone to play with. So she brought out her other dog. And off Turbo went. And went. And kept on going. As Turbo grew up, he learned to do even more. Like jump up on the couch. What are you doing, sir? You got your own chair? And wear a cool denim vest. <laughs> and do the cha-cha with his best friend, Ruby. As soon as these two bumped noses, they were inseparable. Turbo could have decided to just give up, but he didn't. He kept going and going and going. And now he's got the best life, full of friends, adventure, and love. Go Turbo, go! Something was wrong with Munchkin the cat. He was feeling sick and having trouble breathing. He didn't have the energy to play with toys or wrestle with his brother. His mom, Chriselle, was worried. Munchkin needed to go to the vet, but the vet was an hour away. Because of the pandemic, the country was on strict lockdown and driving that far was against the rules. But Chriselle knew that this time, she had to break the rules. She put Munchkin in the car and headed straight to the vet. When they were stopped at a checkpoint, Chriselle was worried. What if they were told to go home? Munchkin needed help now. But the people at the checkpoint saw that Munchkin needed help. And they were let through. As soon as they arrived, the vet put a mask on Munchkin that gave him oxygen and helped him breathe. After examining him 
and cleaning him up, the vet realized he had pneumonia. So he gave Munchkin more oxygen. He needed to keep using it until his lungs healed. The vet gave Chriselle a machine to bring home so she could keep giving oxygen to Munchkin. He liked it best when she filled up a box with the steam. Chriselle always kept Munchkin next to her because she was so worried about him. Every day, she'd give him oxygen and then start work. And then one day, she saw this. He wanted to play. A little too hard. And pretty soon, Munchkin didn't need help breathing at all. Then something pretty amazing happened. Munchkin figured out a new way to talk to Chriselle. He had different meows to let her know what he was thinking. There was, I need to use the bathroom, or I'm hungry, or even Open the door, please! Munchkin's new meows meant he and Chriselle could really understand each other. In his own way, Munchkin makes sure to say thank you to Chriselle for taking a big risk to save his life. But Chriselle knows that love is always worth taking a risk. When he got sick, Chriselle was scared for Munchkin. But now, he's back at home, feeling healthy and feeling the love. A hug? <laughs> we missed you too, little salamander. You've grown so much since we first met. But are you sure you're ready to leave your pond? Just a few months ago, we were walking in the woods and spotted you. But what were you? You were a whole bunch of somethings under the water. Turns out, this was you and like a hundred of your siblings. You were eggs. Then we saw your mom and she needed our help because some of you were stranded. Salamander eggs have to be underwater to hatch. So we gently put you where you needed to be. And your brothers and sisters too. We thought we were done, but we couldn't stop thinking about you. And your mom too. What if you needed more help growing? So we checked in later and you'd hatched. You were the cutest little kiddos, all gills and no legs. But you needed our help, again, because your puddle didn't have enough food for everyone. Don't fight, you two. Don't worry, we brought snacks. We weren't sure you'd like them, but you did. And the next time we came to see you, you weren't just tails with heads anymore. Your legs were popping out. And you looked right at us like you were saying, hello, friend, we missed you. After that, we couldn't wait to see you again because you'd grown so quickly into brave little explorers. You had back legs and front legs, perfect for getting around in the water and on land. Would you let us hold you? You weren't too sure at first, but then it was like you realized who we were, the one who helped you when you were just an egg and when you were hungry. We made sure our hands were clean so the salt and oil on our skin wouldn't hurt you. And that's when we saw them. Your toes! The most adorable toes we'd ever seen. Oh, just look at those little wigglers! <laughs> okay, okay, time to get back in the water. Soon, you all wanted to get a closer look at us. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't get over these toes. But you couldn't hang out with us all the time. After all, you were wild salamanders, not pets. We knew that soon you'd be leaving the pond to go on salamander adventures. And now you're ready. 
we'll miss you all. But we know you'll come back here someday to have babies of your own. <laughs> What's this? A final hug before you go? Oh, did you just blow us a kiss? Watching you grow from tiny eggs into big wild salamanders was an amazing journey we'll never forget. See you next spring, little ones. When Munchkin was spotted in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, they thought she was just a rock. But when they got closer, they saw what she really was, a huge loggerhead sea turtle who really needed help. Munchkin was in trouble. Her temperature was low, two of her flippers were hurt, and she didn't weigh enough. She needed someone who would help her feel like herself again. She needed a rescuer. And what she got was a whole team of rescuers from the New England Aquarium. Their plan was to take her in, get her healthy, and release her back home to the ocean. But first, they had to give her a name. What do you call a 300-pound turtle? They picked Munchkin. Once Munchkin's temperature got up to a healthy level, they put her in a tank where she could swim around, get exercise, feel safe, and grow stronger. Every day, they gave Munchkin her favorite turtle food and medicine. They cleaned her shell and made sure the turtle knew how much they loved her. They hoped that one day she'd be ready to go back out into the sea, where sea turtles belong, where Munchkin wanted to be. Then, something amazing happened. After eight months of living with her rescuers, Munchkin was feeling healthy again. Her skin and shell were the right turtley color, and she had so much energy to swim and play in the water. It was time to go home. The rescue team decided to release her close to where she was found eight months ago, but they wanted to be sure they could keep an eye on Munchkin even after she left them. So they put a small tracker on the back of her shell which would let them watch how far and how fast she swam and where her turtle journeys would take her. It was the day of her release. The rescuers gently put Munchkin into a truck and drove her to the beach. Munchkin was maybe a little nervous, but once she got there, a crowd was waiting for her. Everyone wanted to see Munchkin head home. Munchkin was finally ready. The rescuers lowered her into the sand and watched. Almost like Munchkin had stopped to say goodbye and thank all the rescuers for helping her. Then she crawled right into the waves and swam on. The rescuers miss Munchkin, but they have a lot to be happy about. By helping Munchkin and other sea turtles feel better, and then by bringing them back to the ocean, the rescuers are helping sea turtles everywhere. These dogs are in serious trouble. A hurricane just swept through destroying houses and separating them from their families. But don't worry, 
because Doug the drone pilot is here to rescue them. Doug's a real life superhero. He can fly and see in the dark, or at least his drone can. And with the help of that drone, Doug has saved animals all over the world. And just like any superhero, Doug has an origin story because he wasn't always an animal rescuer. It all started with one stray pup named Duke. Doug was in the Bahamas after a hurricane to film the destruction and help people learn what happened to all the homes there. When all of a sudden, he spotted someone, Duke. Immediately, Doug sprung into action. Come on, pup. And got Duke to safety. Come here. Want some more? Oh, bless your heart, you poor little creature. Come on. There you go. If it wasn't for Doug's superhero drone, it's possible he would have never found Duke, which got him thinking, what if there were more animals in danger here? Using his drone, he searched and rescued and searched and rescued some more. Oh, these poor pups. Doug found so many dogs, but there was still a bit of a problem. Even with a high-powered camera attached to his drone, Doug knew there were still more dogs missing. So he went back to America and came back with an even better camera that can see in infrared. That means he could see the dog's body heat instead of just the dog. He powered up his drone, flew it over the scene, and bam, there they are. Look at all those dogs. With this new infrared camera, Doug was able to pinpoint their exact location and bring them all to safety, just like he did with Duke. But just as he was getting ready to call it a day, he learned there'd been wildfires in Australia. So rather than head home, he took a flight around the world to start saving even more animals in danger. He took his infrared drone to the sky, and look, koalas. These guys were stuck in the trees, all with no place to go after the wildfires took their homes. But one by one, Doug helped rescuers find them with the power of the drone. This is Douglas, he's here with a tiny little baby. She'd only be about 10 months old. And because of the drone, this little life was saved. He really is a superhero. And right after rescuing those koalas in Australia, he hopped on a plane to Louisiana to search for cats in the aftermath of another hurricane. Cats were gonna be a little harder to spot than dogs. But Doug was the man with the plan. Once again, he fired up the drone took a look through the camera, and wowza. There's our pretty kitties. Don't worry, kitty cats. Doug is here to help. Doug has saved so many animals, but he never forgot about Duke, the very first pup he spotted. The one who inspired him to become a real life superhero. And when Doug heard Duke still didn't have a home, he knew he had to help him one more time by becoming his dad. Now that Doug has a proper sidekick, he's ready to keep up with his superhero duties. Wherever disaster strikes, chances are you'll find Doug and his high-flying drone swooping in to save the day. That way, any animal in danger, whether it's a cat, a koala, or even a duke, can have a safe place to call home. Goldfish driving a car coming through. Wait, what? What in the Finding Nemo is going on here? For years, people have underestimated fish. Not anymore, buddy. Welcome to the world of fish navigation. Most people only thought fish could swim and eat and look shiny, of course. But scientists knew they were capable of so much more. Fish could do things that people never thought were possible. What? And the crowd goes wild! So the scientist wondered, could fish learn how to drive a car? We told you not to underestimate us. So they built a little vehicle that would run on fish power. 
It had a small camera above the tank that tracked which direction the fish was swimming, which would then tell the wheels of the car to turn left or right. This way? Oh no, this way. But was the fish actually going somewhere on purpose or just driving around in circles? The scientists had a feeling the fish knew exactly what they were doing. They set up an experiment. On one side of the room was a target. On the other, the fish. Once the fish drove over to the pink paper, they'd get a treat. Goldfish, start your engines. In car number one, we've got Mr. Darcy. He's headed towards the corner. Oh, he's making the turn. Can he straighten out? Yes. Bring it home! Treat for Mr. Darcy! In car number two, we have Mr. Wickham! And go! Go! Mr. Darcy again, faster towards the target now! And Mr. Wickham! Mr. Darcy speeding over, learning faster and faster how to get there! Mr. Wickham! What's happening? Oh, wait! He's putting pedal to the metal! And that's a treat for Mr. Wickham, too! Now that these fish know how to drive, the world is their oyster! Oh, hey, Susan! Room for two on that bench? <laughs> oh, jeez, I'm a jokester. Hey, Grego! You got that presentation ready yet for the big meeting at 11? And thus, fish prove that they have a lot more going on behind those big, beautiful, unblinking eyes of theirs. Just ask the scientists. So many people say, hey, fish can remember only three seconds. And we're like, no, they can remember for one year and they can drive a robot. What's next for these swimming drivers? Fish airplanes? Fish astronauts? Or most likely they just want to hit the road to tell the world. How many times do we have to tell you not to underestimate us? Driving down the road with the wind in my back. Yeah. Mir, we're getting something special for you. Want to know what it is? We think you're going to love it. Because we've seen you try to walk on your three strong legs. You're doing good but we know it's hard for you and that sometimes you feel shy and other times you feel a little sad too. So back to your present. What do you think it is? Go ahead, take a guess. No, it's not a chicken. No, it's not a whole flock of chickens either. We didn't know you wanted a chicken near. Maybe next time? Okay, okay, fine, we'll tell you. It's a leg! Wait, 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 be patient, Mir. You see, um, we don't exactly have the leg right now. We have to make it. This part's gonna feel slimy, but we have to make a cast first. It'll be the mold for your new leg. Check it out, looks exactly like your foot, right? Right? You heard him, leg maker. Time to get building. Near, near, near! Your leg is ready, we think. But there's only one way to know for sure. Are you ready to try it on? Put on this sock first. It goes between the new leg and your skin, so you don't get any blisters. Now let's see if it fits. Looking good! We'll just make a few minor adjustments here and here, and done. How's it feeling, bud? Do you love it? Go ahead, Mir, try it out. That's it, nice and slow. Okay, look at you. Still, it's gonna take some practice to move faster. You're still getting used to having four legs. So, new plan. Mir, meet Nina. She's gonna help you get in shape. Nina says, just do what I do. I think it's working. You're doing so great, Mir. Maybe you'll be ready to run next. Whoa! We didn't think you'd be able to run that fast. 
Uh, where are you two going? And that's not the only surprise you have for us. Mir, you got horns. You're a grown-up bull with a whole crew of farm pals and people, too. I'll take all the pets, please. Now that I think about it, Mir, this is a pretty great story. Maybe we should write a song about it. No? You'd rather just hang in the dirt? <laughs> that works, too. Mir, you're the best gift we ever got. And we're so glad you're feeling all better. It's this cat's first time getting stuck in a tree. I'm gonna get ya. I sure I am. I know it. But for Normer, it's cat rescue number 70. This is cat rescue number 70. And this cat is it's about, uh, I say, 60 feet up right there. And I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him as quick as I can. He's never seen a cat in a tree that he can't save. Hey, Normer Adams, I'm up here rescuing the little kitty kitty, little Tommy. And once he started rescuing cats, he couldn't Come stop. On. Because there are so many cats out there that need his help. How long has he been up there? Oh, about two days. Okay, two days. Two days? Could you imagine being stuck up there for two days? But before he was saving cats, Norma was helping kids find forever homes. A true knight in shining armor. But after he retired, he realized he wasn't done saving lives just yet. And that's when he started rescuing cats. Yeah, this is my first cat rescue, and this kitty is just so grateful. Yeah. And there's the kitty right there. And uh, he's been up there six days now. Six days? I thought two days was long. Normer has always had a love for cats. He lives with a few at home. And he even kind of speaks cat. No. No. He's paying attention to me now. That's a good sign. Let me see what I can do. Even though Normer is just a regular guy who saves cats, he's figured out how to get any cat down at any height using some very special gadgets. You see this little flat bag here? This is the kitty bag right here. All right, Kicker, I'm gonna get you, okay? You see this bag right here? It's gonna go over your head and you're gonna feel really good, okay? Which have helped him rescue hundreds and hundreds of cats. Over 1,000 cats to be exact. Okay, this is cat rescue number 60. Okay, this is cat rescue number 117 and uh, it's a good 100 feet. This is cat rescue 259. Cat rescue 372. Okay, this is cat rescue 400. You okay? 527. Come on. Cat Rescue 675, I believe. These are real sweet. Okay. No cat gets left behind. And every single one of Normer's rescues has been successful. This is Cat Rescue 776. Okay, I got Snowy. Being a rescuer is really exciting. But what's Normer's favorite part of the job? Reuniting a cat with their family. <laughs> and all of this is out of the kindness of his heart. Because even the best climbers need a hand every now and then. <laughs> so the next time you see a cat stuck in a tree, just call Normer and he'll make sure they get down safe and sound and home to their family. Almost there, almost there, kitty almost rescued. And the kitty's down. Okay, the cat's in the bag. That's where that saying comes from. <laughs> When Abba was in danger, something very unusual saved his life. Honey? How in the world could honey save a turtle? Well, Abba had gotten tangled in a ghost net. Basically a fishing net that's been lost or left in the ocean. Sometimes curious turtles like Abba swim into them by mistake. 
In this time, Abba was so stuck, he could barely move his flippers. He was afraid he'd never swim again. But these rescuers said, we'll show that net who's boss. They were gonna do whatever it took to get Abba free. Even though he was scared, Abba knew that if his rescuers could be so brave, he could be brave too. But the net was very tangled. It was pinching Abba hard. Abba's new friends didn't want to accidentally hurt him. This net was gonna need to come off one string at a time. We're just trying to just get them slightly out of the way. Abba knew they were trying to be gentle. So he tried to be patient. Even though there were so many strings to cut, the rescuers didn't quit until they got them all. Abba was free. Take that, ghost net. But this turtle rescue wasn't over yet. Abba wanted to swim away, but he couldn't. The net had injured his flippers. Good thing his rescuers were vets. So instead of going for a swim, Abba was going for a ride to get those flippers fixed. Abba was nervous. He'd never been to a vet before. Was he going to get a shot? Did he need stitches? Were they gonna operate? Would they make him swallow a big pill? Also, what's a pill? When they got to the clinic, he wasn't quite sure what to expect. But he was pretty surprised when they pulled out a big box of honey. Humans have been using honey to help cuts heal for thousands of years. And it works on turtles too. The doctor spread the honey on Abba's flippers. A little here and a little here. Then they carefully wrapped his flippers in bandages. Abba was like, honey, do your thing. As Abba healed, he started to get his strength back and his appetite. It's a lot easier to catch food when you're not stuck in a net. It didn't take long before Abba's flippers were back to full flipping speed. He was feeling like his strong and wild self again. The honey had done its thing and it was time for another ride. He was going back to the sea at last. Here we go. <laughs> Abba was so happy to be in the ocean again. He swam as fast and as far as he could. He never wanted to stop. But he'll always remember his rescuers. And he'll never forget how he was saved by honey. Help the kittens find the subscribe button.